Let's look at one last example of Simpson's rule before we move on to a new topic. Let's use Simpson's rule with 10 subdivisions to uh, compute the integral zero to one e to the x squared dx. And let's see how good of an estimate it is. So notice here that e to the x squared is like before, it doesn't have an, it has a no elementary antiderivative. The fundamental theorem of calculus cannot help us compute this thing. We want to do a numerical calculation. So the integral from zero to one of e to the x squared dx, we're going to compute this using Simpson's rule with 10 subdivisions. We can go through the details of this, but I also just recommend to use the calculator that's online. If you use a calculator, it'll spit out the number 1.4 uh, 626681. So this is an estimate. We can get this very quickly with a calculator if we just plug in the appropriate things. That's wonderful. But it's not just good enough to have the estimate. We have to know how good of an estimate it is. And so how bad is the error in the situation? Well, like we saw before, the error associated to Simpson's rule is bounded above by k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 into the fourth. Now, some of these things we know off, our, off the bat, b minus a is the length of the interval. So we get this portion right here, one minus zero to the fifth. One minus zero, of course, is one. So that's just gonna disappear. Uh, then we get 180 over um, we're taking 10 subdivisions, so 10 to the fourth. And so working with this, we're going to get K on top. We're going to get 180 and then 10 to the fourth. That's just going to give, give you 10 more zeros to concatenate on the bottom there. So you get 1.8 million on the, on the bottom. All right. So how do we determine this K value? Remember, K is supposed to be a bound on the fourth derivative of this function on the interval zero to one, all right? Now, if we take f, f as our function e to the x squared, we've done some of these calculations in a previous video. Uh, the, the first derivative, remember, was two x e to the x squared. The second derivative was e to the x squared times two plus four x squared, if I remember that correctly. If we continue on with that, I'm not gonna go through necessarily all the details, but oh, well, I, okay, we can do some details. You twisted my arm there. Um, taking the derivative of this using the power or the product rule, right? If you take the derivative of two plus four x squared, that's an eight x times that by e to the x squared, add that to the derivative of e to the x squared, which it is two x e to the x squared. And then you have this two plus four x squared right there. Uh, we can combine some like terms because everything's still divisible by e to the x squared. Factor that thing out. You're going to have an 8x. You have a 2x, which distributes on the 2, so that's a 4x. You should have a 12x right there. And then there is an 8x cubed uh, as our third derivative. And then for the fourth derivative, we got to do this one more time. Uh, again, by the product rule, the derivative e to the x squared is 2x e to the x squared times by the polynomial 12x plus 8x cubed. For the second one, we'll get an e to the x squared. And then the derivative is a 12 plus 24, 24x squared. We could factor out the e to the x squared. I guess we'll just do that. Uh, just make it a little bit cleaner e to the x squared, that leaves behind a 2x times a 12x, that's going to be 24x squared, that combines with that one, that gives me a 48x squared. 2x times that by 8x cubed, that gives me a 16x to the fourth, and then finally there should be a 12 right there, 12 plus 48x squared plus 16x to the fourth, that's great. Uh, what can we say about this function? Um, this function, we could ascertain that, kind of like we did before, this guy right here, e to the x squared, this is always positive and increasing. This polynomial right here is also always positive and increasing. So our function right here will always be positive and it'll be increasing. And when I say increasing, of course, I mean on the interval, uh, on the interval zero to one. It's not increasing everywhere. And so in particular, our K value will be at the maximum, that's what it's supposed to be, but the maximum will be at the right endpoint. 
So this is going to be the fourth derivative evaluated at 1. So we get an e. We're going to get 48 plus 16 plus 12, uh, which that adds up to be 76 e. That is our k value. Bring it back and plug it in right here. We're going to get 76 e over 1.8 million. And so you could simplify that thing. Uh, that's not necessary because we, we want a decimal approximation. So we need to approximate this. We're going to get 0 0.0001115. So this is the worst case scenario. Our error cannot be worse than this. And as such, we're accurate to approximately four decimal places, accurate to at least three, but we're almost at fourth decimal place right there. This is what we got um, for the Simpsons rule using 10 subdivisions. Just as a comparison, right? We did the same calculation with the midpoint rule with 10 subdivisions, and its error would be approximately, well, it would be, I should say the error would be no worse than 0 0.007. So you can see that the Simpsons rule with the same number of calculations is by um, orders of magnitude more accurate on average. Again, these are just error bounds. The, bear, the error could be much, much, much smaller. But if you have the two options, like I know that Simpsons rule will, worst case scenario is much better than the worst case scenario of the midpoint. So in practice, Simpson rule is gonna be the best method you're gonna to wanna to use in these calculations. So that brings us to the end of lecture 18, which also will close the book proverbially on section 7.7 .7 about approximate integration. Um, we are gonna have to do approximate integrals every once in a while. So those calculators will be, that I mentioned, keep those links readily available. Because once in a while, there will be integrals that we can't necessarily calculate by hand using the fundamental theorem calculus. So we wanna approximate those. Uh, those will be very useful for us in chapter eight. Um, in fact, chapter eight is gonna be about applications of integration, which we already did in chapter six, six of Stewart's textbook. But some things we postponed until chapter eight because the integrals are kind of just, they're too difficult to calculate and we need to, numerical approximations to determine uh, what these values are gonna be. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you next time, everyone.